Hi guys, welcome back to Chopped Garage. Look what's back with us. It's the Citroen DS. So if you haven't watched the channel before, um, you won't know that I bought this from a main dealer's part exchange yard. And when I started up in the yard, it made a bit of a rattling noise from the engine, which obviously set alarm bells off. This being the 1.6 um, Prince engine, which is shared between the Mini Cooper S. Um, it's in this DS. I forget what else it's in. It's in the Peugeot R C Z. Uh, it's in lots of engines. It's lots of cars, and it's renowned for being a troublesome engine, timing chains especially. Um, so I put a bid in uh, based on the fact that I would have to do the timing chain on it, um, and popped it down to my garage down the road called Moors. Asked them to have a look at it, and they checked the timing, and the timing was bang on. And it's the problem with the with the noise was it was intermittent. It wasn't consistent. So sometimes it happened cold sometimes it would happen warm sometimes it would um ha not happen at all you could start it several times with no noise happening at all and no one could really diagnose what was wrong with it. they didn't want to start swapping parts out and, and running up big costs but in the end we were going to just do with the timing chain we did change out the solenoid that runs a variable valve timing did that did an oil and filter change on it to make sure it had the correct filter on it oil filter on it because sometimes if someone puts the wrong one in that could affect things as well so we did those things to no avail so i got it back i ran it again for a while and again it was intermittently happening and then what happened was that uh, salvage rebuilds uk put out a video on a rcz that they had in that made a very similar noise and a lot of you guys pointed me to that i had actually already seen it um and said give it a go it's got to be worth a go isn't it now, now i'll show you um what they decided was based on the comments again they didn't find this out themselves they had loads and loads of comments on their video and everyone pointed to an issue with the water pump tensioner um and when they changed that over on theirs it resolved the problem so my next step was to buy that kit send this car down to moors and have them fit it as i've just got it back and um i've been running it for a day or so but first of all let me show you the parts that were swapped I thought it was worth showing everybody because obviously this is going to come up for a number of other people sometimes as well. It is does seem to be the most overly complicated um, and convoluted water pump setup I've ever seen in my life. So what you've got is you've got your water pump there. And then on top of the water pump, you've got this wheel here with uh, rubber around it. Now, the first thing we noted when we took the old one off is look how cracked up the rubber is on this. Now that looks to me like something's been sticking and then because it's sticking it's broken up the rubber on it like the belt's been sticking against that because the belt runs across the back of the belt runs against that now some of you can know best than me how this setup works the belt itself looks okay there's no cracking but the outside of it does look fairly shiny the inside has some cracking on it but it sits the back of it sits on there and then this somehow here this tensioner here again uh, i'm gonna have to uh to bow to those you know exactly how it works uh, but this tensioner here and this tensioner here do something or other <laughs> i should have checked this out before i started talking tonight but i know this one is electronic so this is electronically driven and as I understand it, based on what the engine temperature is, this electronic one can tension the belt further, and these can fail. Um, now, I don't know whether it's the fact that this has got broken up on it. I don't think it's broken up enough on it to cause the problems. I think probably we've got a problem with this here. It's all freely moving, um, but perhaps there's a problem in the electronic side of it. All Everything is freely moving, but we can clearly see that this has suffered some damage. And I guess we don't, I don't know if there's a way of sort of electronically testing this to see if it works. But these are all the parts. Now, I could have obviously just gone for changing that alone. Uh, what I went for on the end, though, was changing the wheel, the water pump, uh, that tensioner, that tensioner. I changed everything and the belt. So it's got all brand new on it because I didn't want to basically, I didn't want to have to go back and forth, back and forth as to what it might be. You know, it's always best to change a water pump anyway. But the parts weren't massively expensive. I think I paid a bit more than the guys did um they probably buy a lot more parts from me and get better prices i think i was running into about 180 quid rather than their 150 getting all the parts and then i paid for someone to do it because i was too busy so i paid the moors guys to do it um we were a little hesitant because they were worried that you know i was playing parts darts a bit at it but i said you know uh, to be fair to my subscribers there were a couple of you 
that said that that's what the problem was from the very beginning. Now, the only trouble with that is, guys, is that I had about 100 people telling me 100 different things that could be wrong. So knowing who's right is a very difficult one, again, without playing major part starts. But all those parts have been replaced. Now, I have driven the car. Now, I went, I drove it home. I drove it back from the garage. I let it sit. I started again, didn't make the noise. I drove it home, didn't make the noise. Came back to out to about two hours later. Um, drove it to the gym didn't make a noise left it outside the gym for an hour came back in it started it again didn't make a noise um, now I'm hesitant to say that it's fixed I'm gonna run it again this weekend and then after the weekend I'll be able to tell you for sure but initial signs are it may well have resolved the problem guys which is fantastic because if you remember this is a full Citroen service history with thir only 30,000 miles on it, it's the convertible, it is the 1.6 turbo, it's a great spec car, and I imagine it's gonna be very popular. And um, with that work done to it now, along with the full service history, the warranty I put on it with warranty-wise will cover it for pretty much anything. So um, so we've now done, obviously, all those parts. We serviced at the same time, obviously, at the beginning to check the oil and so forth. Um, but yeah, it should be technically really ready to go it just needs to need a good valet once i've done a day's more testing just to be 100 percent now over a course of two days it would make the noise you wouldn't get away with two days without it making the noise so if i get away with two days without making the noise at all then i'm pretty damn confident it's resolved so yes thanks for everyone that uh, directed me to that video like i said i had always seen it but i appreciate the thought and thanks for you know those of you that did say this at the very beginning give yourselves a big pat on the back and <laughs> well done um and uh, yeah, well, I say, we'll confirm after the weekend if you should be patting yourself on the back. I think just another point, I think we can assume, again, this is a car that was part exchange with the main dealer and the owner did not disclose the fault. Um, they just did the deal and said nothing about it. It wasn't until I went to move out of the car park that I was able to tell the dealer, you know, you've got a bit more of a problem with it. Because if they started, if they tried it out when it was warm, the dealer, they wouldn't have known any better, probably. Um, so yeah, it was a known fault. This, you know, it's clear that this person put this in because they thought they were going to have to do. They were probably told they were going to have to do a full timing chain replacement on it um, by somebody, and rather than start to even book it in and get the work done, they just decided to get out of the car. Now, one thing is for sure that if the DS is fixed, it's decided it's definitely having the last laugh because after over two years of doing this now, I think it's coming up to uh, on the way down to Moors today to pick up those bits. I got pulled by a police officer. So I was driving along, a traffic car went in the opposite direction. You never see traffic cars in North Devon at all. Um, so one was traveling in the opposite direction as I went into um, South Moulton and he passed me. Anyway, I got within about sort of uh, literally about eight foot of uh, moors on the, on the street in, in uh, South Moulton. And the police officer came up behind me with lights all a-flashing and pulled me over. So obviously I had my trade plates on, but admittedly I had them in the windows, not on the outside of the car. And um, he pulled me over and said that uh, it'd come up on AMPR as uninsured. Now obviously I add all my cars to the insurance as I go along. Um, log on to my Midas, add them along. Never any problems doing that at all. Um, so he ran this number plate. And it was coming up as uninsured so he asked to see my driving license and then he asked who my insurer was now i go for a broker and i couldn't tell you what the name of my insurance was i couldn't tell you what the name of my broker was either to be honest so um i said to him would you mind do you mind if i get my laptop out i know it was my laptop sat on the on the front of his three series or five series might have been I don't remember bmws um trying to connect to my phone to bring up my uh to bring up my emails and so forth although i did have my emails on my phone but i wanted to obviously open a pdf it's gonna be easier on my laptop and uh had to try and search out my uh certificate on my computer which i couldn't find and obviously not went into my emails and searched insurance and obviously just got tons and tons of emails with insurance on so in the end i had to google um uh, car insurance you know dealer insurance Barnstable see if there's any brokers that came up broker did come up and then I recognised the one that is my broker messaged them and said can I have the uh, certificate because I did actually no sorry I did have a certificate on my computer but for some reason didn't have a policy number on it um, and he took the insurer's name off that ran it through their system and it still came back I had no insurance so we then got hold of the broker he, luckily the policeman was patient while I did that 
Uh, the officer was patient when I did that. I got him a copy of the certificate sent over. They emailed it to me straight over. He then checked it with them again, and it came back that I did have insurance, but because it does my content insurance and other things, apparently it was on a different database. So that's how it got missed. So then, again, checked to see if this was on there, and it was still coming up as uninsured. Now, I was still insured to be driving it because I don't physically have to have put them onto MyDAS to be insured on my policy. I should do when I get the cars back to my unit, which... Um, which worried me somewhat because we then ran the Alfa Romeo and that also came back as uninsured, which was worrying because again, that's on my Midas. I even opened my Midas up in front of the officer and showed him all the cars on there. Um, I think he, you know, I think he obviously could see I was genuinely trying to do the right thing and he was top, top guy, no problems at all, uh, no attitude um, and was patiently waiting while I got this stuff together. So yeah, kudos to the police officer. I felt bad for taking up his time, to be honest. He did say to me, he said, I never would have pulled you in the first place if the uh, tray plates had been underneath on the outside or if I'd just been able to see more, more clearly in the screen, he said, because um, I only stopped you because the car came back as uninsured and I couldn't see the tray plates. So it's my own fault. Anyway, so um, I came back here and thought, well, I'll get on and check what that is. Um, rang my insurance and they said, oh no, none of those cars are insured. My broker. I said, why is that? And they said, um, where are you putting them? And I told them, oh no, when you changed, when we um, did your renewal at the beginning of the year, we changed the supplier and there's a different login to go and log the information. And I said, well, when did you tell me this? Oh, I'm sure we told you when we, when we did it. And I couldn't find anywhere in my emails any login to this new portal to put the cars on. So effectively, they've been sitting around uninsured. Obviously, when I'm driving them again on the road, I am insured by my policy. I don't necessarily have to be on there because um, I've spoken to about it before when I've gone and picked up cars and haven't had access to a computer to add them to my policy. They said, no, you're fine while you're driving it around and just put it on when you get back. But yeah, very worrying. So thanks to that police officer, I caught a problem that otherwise I probably would have been unaware of because, I, like I say, you, know, you never see police officers around this area. I don't drive on the motorways or dual carriageways, it's just around locally. Um, and my vehicles would have remained uninsured if it wasn't for that police officer highlighting that to me. I was able to then, it did obviously take me a little while to go and log them all, but yeah, lock sitting outside wouldn't have been covered. Something's missing as well, the green MGB. It's gone down for its MOT with those tires. So you've got to be fingers crossed for me on that, that it doesn't turn out to be a complete rock box. My gut is that it isn't. Having done so many MGBs, I, you know, I've been underneath a lot of MGBs and that one looks solid, but who knows what else it might throw up. It could need loads of brake pipes. It could lose loads of fuel pipes. Um, I mean, it's not going to need tires. It could need a load of brakes, but luckily with MGBs, everything's available off the shelf. And the nice thing about the MGBs is the reason I run them myself is every bit of money you put into them, normally you can get back because they're only going up in value and the better you are looking after it. Um, the more of a premium people are prepared to pay for them. So unlike other cars, it actually makes sense to put that money into it. So yeah, you all need to have both hands with fingers crossed on both of those things until uh, until you hear any positive news. Zuki's getting a clean up because uh, basically she's filthy. And I do actually need to put her out for sale, not because I need to sell her, but she should be up for sale because she's a car that's gone through the books. So she should actually be up for sale and she's not. Um, so I need to put her on there, but it will be up at a, I really don't want to sell her price because it's such a fantastic car. Is it the cleanest one out there? No, there's probably an absolute minter out there. Um, but uh, pound for pound, this is the most fun on four wheels I think you can get really for the money. And all of you know, I've been driving it all the time. Never let me down. I've done gearbox oil, engine oil, spark plugs, air filter, it's like I've had a proper service with me. I've done the tyres on it. I gave it a good going round down at the little track down at Perrinporth. And again, it never let me down. That engine management light that came on for the emissions that happened weeks and weeks ago has never come back on since I cleared it. So I do think that was, as I said to you, I did a very sharp corner, changed down the gear, hooned it. And I think it probably just had a momentary misfire or something. And that just clogged the sensor up a little bit. but Because it's gone through enough cycles now if it was a permanent problem to, to come up. So yeah, I better cl finish cleaning her up and advertise and hopefully no one wants to buy her. I think I'll probably put her up at like 2995 um, and that should keep enough people off of her unless there's somebody desperate out there now to have one, I guess. Um, because I think you can, you can pick them up for a couple of K. Um, 
but obviously that's off someone's doorstep with no comeback. So after my encounter with the police officer this morning, I have got on and uploaded all of the cars to the proper online system. I haven't been able to find an email yet from my insurance that advised me I needed to change these over. So I'm very thankful to the police officer that he stopped me this morning actually, because I was just carrying on blissfully unaware that it was incorrect. Anyway, what it has highlighted has that I have probably 20 cars on my policy and I ha currently have two cars for sale. So I've had to have a bit of word with myself. It's uh, putting down black and white. This has made me realize that I really do need to uh, pull my finger out and uh, crack on now to have 20 cars, but only two for sale. is not a particularly good business model. So uh, best get cracking.